Okay, so so far we've been looking at exponential functions. Now we're going to move on to the second part of this chapter, which is about something called logarithms. So what I've written here is that you know that the inverse of many mathematical operations, um, for example, we can undo an addition by two, for example, by subtracting two. But is there an inverse function for an exponential function? So let's just explore this idea a little bit more. So here, our function is multiplying by 3, so 4 multiplied by 3 gives you 12. If we wanted to do the inverse of that, we know that the inverse function is going to be dividing by 3. The next one, we've got um, the function is adding 3, so we know that the inverse of that is subtracting 3. The inverse of squaring is going to be square rooting. The inverse of going to the power of 5 is either going to the power of a fifth, or doing the fifth root of x. Either of those things are going to be the inverse function. And now the last one, the thing that we're really trying to ask here, here we have the exponential function of doing three to the power of x. And we want to know what is the inverse function for this exponential function. And there's no surprises here, this is going to be a logarithm. And it is the inverse function of raising to the power of x is going to be log base three of x. And I'm going to be explaining this a little bit more in a second. But the most important thing that we're learning here is that the inverse of going to the power of x is this thing called a logarithm. So let's see what this actually means in practice. We're going to see how we can interchange between exponential and log form. Log is just a shortened word for logarithm, just because it's a bit quicker to say. So logarithms, and really logarithms, the word logarithms it really should just be powers, okay, because this is what it really means. It means power. Powers exist in order to provide an inverse to exponential functions. So this thing that I've got written here, so there's the word log, a small a that's a subscript a, and then n. We say this log base a of n, log base a of n. This statement is equivalent to a to the power of x equals n. So we're going to see if we can explore this a bit more. What it does here is the log function outputs the missing power. So this thing here, when you do this, um, if I was going to do log base 3 of 81, it would output the missing power of 3, so you get 4, because 3 to the power of 4 is 81. And we can do a lot more exploring of this. So, it says here, we've got 3 squared equals 9 is the equivalent of log of base 3 of 9 is equal to 2. These two statements here are equivalent to each other. And I'm going to show you two methods of interchanging between these forms, and all you need to do is to pick your favourite, but it's worth being familiar with both of them. I would say this is probably the method I use the most, the missing power. So it says, note first the base. Sorry, note that first the base of the log must match the base of the exponential. So this base that I've got here means that this is the base of the overall thing that I'm going to do. It's going to be two with some kind of power. And what this is saying, log base two of eight, for example, is asking the question two to what power gives eight. This sentence that I think of when I say the word log, it's like the power. The little two means of two, and the eight means that gives eight. So this kind of makes sense, that the power of two that gives eight is three, because two to the power of three is equal to eight. So this is probably the way my brain thinks about this. I think when I read this, two to what power gives eight. I've seen some other ways of doing this. Sometimes people will do log two eight equals three, and they will see that it's like, it's trying to say, what's the missing power that I would put in here that would make two to the power of something equal to eight? So it would be two to the power of three is equal to eight, because this is the bit that's gonna be going inside that little box down there. So that's one of the ways of writing these expressions. The other thing is to do the same operation to each side of the equation. Since key stage three, you have been used to the idea of doing the same thing to each side of the equation that undoes whatever you want to get rid of. So for example, if you had three X plus two equals 11, you would undo this plus two by doing the inverse, which is take away two. And we already said earlier on that log base A is the inverse of A to the power of and vice versa. 
so they are x and um, they are inverse functions of each other so because of this one here i've got a log base 2 the inverse of log base 2 the inverse of log base 2 is 2 to the power of so if I apply 2 to the power of on the left and 2 to the power of on the right, well, on the right, it's just going to be 2 to the power of 3. And on this side, the inverse are going to cancel. This 2 to the power of and this log base 2 are inverses, so they're just going to cancel, and we get that same statement of 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. Interestingly, though, I've kind of written them in the other way around. This way around, I've got 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. This one, I've got 8 equals 2 to the power of 3. Of course, it doesn't make a difference. So when you read these statements, you should really be thinking to yourself, the power of 2 that gives me 8. Or you can think of doing these inverse functions, knowing that log base 2 and 2 to the power of are the inverses of each other. So what we're going to do here is we're going to rewrite these three things using a logarithm, and we're going to try some different methods for these ones. So for a, we have got 6 to the power of 2 equals 36. OK, so clearly what I've got here is the base. Base meaning the thing that's being raised to the power is 6. So I'm going to write that the power of base 6 that gives me the answer, 36, is 2. And you can think about what we did with that missing power before. We're saying that the power that was there has now gone to the answer part on this side. So that's that first kind of method. The second method, if we've got 6 to the power of 2 equals 36, well, we're going to do the inverse of 6 to the power of. Okay, The inverse of 6 to the power of is going to be log base 6. So on the right-hand side, I will have log base 6 of 36. And the inverse of this log base 6, so the inverse of, of this 6 to the power of is just going to be log, uh, it's just going to be the 2, because you've removed the 6 part from it. Personally, my brain just sits better with this, with this language of saying the power of 6 that gives 36 is 2. This, for me, is a little bit, um, a little bit less clear than doing log base 6 on both sides to cancel out those bits. So let's try B. We've got 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 128. And obviously, 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 128. These aren't random sentences that I've got here. So I would say the first method, well, it's the power of 2 that gives me 128 is 7. And there's that missing power that we could say in there. It's 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 128. The other method, if we've got 2 to the power of 7 equals 128, well, I'm going to do that inverse. The inverse of 2 to the power of is going to be log 2. So to get rid of that, um, that, that 2 to the power of, I will do the inverse, and I will end up with 7. And on this side, I get log 2, 128. So it still works with fractional terms as well. So I've got 64 to the power of a half equals 8, because the square root of 64 is 8. So I would say that the power, remember log just means power, the power of base 64 that gives me the answer 8 is half. And again, that's imagining to yourself you've got 64 to the power of a half equals 8. You've got that missing power that kind of squeezes in there. And the alternative method, if you've got your 64 to the power of a half, equals 8. Well, we want to get rid of this base here, so the way we do that is we would do your log base 64 on both sides. The right-hand side would be your log base 64, 8, and the log base 64 and the base of 64 cancels, so you just get the half there. So I'm just going to put a line down here to say there's a difference between these two methods, method 1 and method 2. My leaning, personally, is method 1. But it's worth saying that method two also has an application. So these ones, we are going to try and rewrite them using a power instead. So let's start off with a. So I've got log base three of 81 equals four. So this is saying the power of three that gives me 81 is four. The alternative method would be log base 3 of 81 equals 4. Well, the, the inverse of log base 3 is 3 to the power of. 
So the 3 to the power of and the log part are going to cancel, so you just get 81, and then have 3 to the power of 4. Okay, B, we've got log base 2 of an 8 is equal to minus 3. So this word, it's the power of 2 that gives you an 8. The power of 2 that gives me an 8 is minus 3. Let's do the alternative method for this one as well. So we've got log base 2 of an 8 equals minus 3. Well, the inverse of log base 2 is going to be 2 to the power of. So the 2 to the power of and the log base 2 are going to cancel. So you just get an 8 equals 2 to the power of minus 3. And then the last one we've got here is we have log 100 equals 2. Well, this is really strange here. There's no base. Well, here's a really important bit. If there's no base, this usually means that the base is 10, okay? If we just have log like this, it actually means, most of the time, it means log base 10. So now we can actually do this question. We're going to say that the power of 10 that gives us 100 is 2. In other words, the power of 10 that gives us 100 is 2. And let's try this using the alternative method. I don't need to write that little term anymore. I'm just going to write log 100 equals 2. Well, the inverse on both sides here is going to be 10 to the power of. So I'm going to do 10 to the power of. The 10 to the power of and the log are going to cancel, so I just get 100. And I'm going to do 10 to the power of 2 over here. So this is me separating these two different methods. OK, so there are some of them here that I'd like you to try and do now without using a calculator. I'm going to ask you to pause this and have a go. Um, and then we'll think about in the next couple of videos about how you can do this with a calculator as well. So pause this and have a go and see if you can do these. OK, so this first one says, the power of 5 that gives you 25, what is that going to be equal to? Well, what we're saying is the power of something is equal to 25. What is that power? Well, the power is going to be 2. This one is saying the power of 3 that gives you 81, what is it? Well, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Whoa. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. So that little power inside there is a 4, which means that the answer is 4. This one is saying the power of 2 that gives you 32. What is that power? It's 5, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. OK, I've written the base 10 in here. You didn't need to write the base 10 in here, because sometimes we would, well, we wouldn't write the base 10. We could just write log. So we're saying that the power of 10 that gives me 1,000, what is that power of 10 that gives us 1,000? It is 3. Here's a really important one. We're doing the log base 4 of 1. We're saying the base is 4, and we're saying what is the power of 4 that gives me the answer 1? 4 to the power of what gives me 1? Well, it's to the power of 0. We know that anything to the power of zero is the thing that will give us one. So the answer to that question is zero because that power would have been a zero in there. This one's nice and easy. We're saying the power of four that gives me four is one. Makes sense there. If you've got the same base and the same answer, the power that should have risen these together is going to be one. Quick thing you could think for all of these, I'm just going to add these in, you can think of it as that missing power saying like 5 squared equals 25, 3 to the power of 4 equals 81, 2 to the power of 5 equals 32, 10 cubed equals 1000, 4 to the power of 0 equals 1, 4 to the power of 1 equals 4. You can kind of imagine those missing powers in there from method 1. So let's have a look now at this one. So we're saying 2 to the power of something, the power of 2 that gives you a half. Well, that one is going to be minus 1, because 2 to the power of minus 1 
is going to be a half. We know that negative powers do the reciprocal. So let's try this next one. We're saying the log of base 3, the power of 3, it gives me 1 over 27. Well, I know it's definitely going to be a negative because there's a reciprocal. And 3 cubed is 27, so it's going to be to the power of minus 3. And you can think to yourself, if it's 3 to the power of minus 3 is equal to 1 over 27. Let's have a think about this one here. So we've now got the power of 2, log of base 2, the power of 2 that gives you 1 over 16. Well, I know it's going to be negative because I've got a reciprocal there. And 2 to the power of 4 is the thing that would give me 16. So it's going to be negative 4. OK, so this one it says log of base A that gives me A cubed. So we're saying the log of base A that gives me A cubed. Well, that's pretty obvious to see. We're just going to say that it is 3. That number that goes in there. It's just got to be a three. So effectively, this this power, sorry, this um, the exponential and the log are cancelling, and we're just getting left with that three there. Now my last one I've got here is I've said the power of four that gives me minus one. Well, this one doesn't exist. Why doesn't this exist? Well, I've written here. While a log can output a negative number, clearly we've got negative three, negative four. We can't log negative numbers. You can't put a negative number into a logarithm. Let's just have a quick think about that. If I was going to draw the graph y equals 4 to the power of x, we know that this graph looks like this. And so it never goes negative. Never goes negative, which means that it doesn't exist. So this one does not exist for that last bit. I'm not quite sure why I drew that so wonky there. But if I was going to draw that as a graph, 4 to the power of x, clearly it's never gone down into this negative section that we've got down here. So let's summarise this and see if we can come up with some general rules for these things that we've got here. So the log of base a that gives me a. So we're saying the base is a. The power, we're trying to say what power gives me a. Well, it's clearly going to be 1. So if you ever have the same base and the same um, output in here, it's just going to be 1. This is a really important one. We're saying any log of 1. So we have that the base is A. We're trying to say what power gives me 1. Well, the answer here is 0. The log of 1 is always going to be 0 because anything to the power of 0 is 1. This one, we're saying to ourselves, the log, the power of a, that gives me a to the power of x, well, clearly, it's just going to be x. So what's effectively happening here is this log base a and this a base are cancelling, and we just get left with x, OK? And this last one that we've got here is very strange. So. Hopefully you can spot that this one is also going to be x because we've got an a to the power of this thing here. But this bit here, we're saying the log of base a that gives me x. We're saying that a to the power of something that gives me x. So we're saying whatever this power is here, I'm now actually going to be doing a to that power. So it's going to have to give me x. That one's probably a bit more trippy to try and figure out what's going on here, but it's equivalent to this one. This a to the power of and this log base a are effectively cancelling each other out because they are inverse functions to each other. So I'm going to stop the video at this point here with the summary of these rules that we've got, but I do just want to say one quick side note. Um, actually, I'm going to say it in the next bit when we start looking at calculators. So I'm just going to end this video here.